church family. Welcome to our next video in the Common Questions uh, series we do on Fridays. We're actually going to start a bit of a mini-series or, or a little bit of a different focus for the next couple weeks. We'll see how long it takes us, but we're going to start looking um, at really how we think as Christians, how we think about our relationship with the Lord, our walk, our spiritual growth, really just hitting at the fundamental level of how we view our life as Christians, right? We, we need to be changing how we think. We want to think as Christ uh, would think and have us to be really uh, understanding things. And so we're going to attempt to delve into that a little bit. Uh, we're going to be walking through Romans chapter 12, again, for the next uh, few sessions. So grab your Bibles if you would. Uh, again, Romans chapter 12, I'm going to look at verse 1, and Pastor's going to look at verse 2, share a few uh, thoughts, and I just I hope we, our prayers that this would be uh, helpful. In fact, let me just let me pray uh, as we begin. Uh, Heavenly Father, I ask now that you would bless uh, the reading of your word, and that you would move through your spirit, and that truth would be proclaimed. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So, Romans, again, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, let me read uh, for us says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Now, this is a, a phrase, especially that phrase, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, is one that we hear a lot if you've grown up in Christian circles. You may, you may come across a lot, but really, we want to understand what that means, because even at surface value, it sounds kind of funky. It sounds a little alarming. Like, what, what do you mean presenting as a living sacrifice? Well, I just want to try to break it down. Uh, when it calls us then to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, uh, bodies in this term here is really referring to all of who you are, all of your entire being, your entire person. It's presenting yourself in uh, this way. It, it harkens back to the Old Testament a little bit. Uh, in, in that regard, and really just it sums up all of who you are, you to live as a living sacrifice. So that's one uh, thing clarified a little bit. Uh, we also see that it is spiritual worship, right? At the end of the verse, which is your spiritual worship. I don't want to spend a lot of time there, but it is worship to the Lord. So it's living in every aspect of you, constantly aiming to be worshipful to the Lord. You don't just stop having your body. You don't just stop having all of who you are, right? It, it's supposed to be... Uh, continue. Um, but this, this term, presenting your bodies, presenting who you are as a living sacrifice, um, of course, uh, again, if you're in Christian circles, you, it, it points back a little bit to the Old Testament sacrificial system of bringing sacrifices to the Lord that are pleasing to Him. And so living in this way is a manner, it's connected to that, it's a manner of bringing sacrifices that are pleasing. This is pleasing to the Lord, it's there in, in the verse. Um, living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, right? He's pleased by it, but it's also practically connected to, to living in a selfless manner. I was thinking of a term that we're familiar with in our tech day here, um, but being self-sacrificing, right? We recognize, wow, that mother was very self-sacrificing for her kids. The father was self-sacrificing for his family. We, we recognize that. It's living not for self. It's nothing mystical in that regard, but it's just living uh, not self-focused. And so what it comes down to, and really as we're drawing to our point as we see this text, um, this is a, a foundational different way of thinking. It's viewing life, living after God's will. If we're going to kind of distill the command down, it's to live with all, you've, all of who you are. It's to live according to God's will and obeying his plan and not your own. And that is a, just a fundamentally different and, and unnatural way of thinking for us, right? It is not natural. It doesn't come natural for me to consider others or to consider the Lord above myself. I mean, our lives are filled with just decision after decision that is, that is <laughs> entrenched in our personal preferences. I mean, every little impulse decision is just me, me, me. <laughs> and so this is a, this is a different uh, way to view living. And then finally, even as, as we look to see some things in verse 2, but uh, it ends in verse 1, I don't want to look past uh, uh, the, the term at the beginning of verse 1, I appeal to you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies in this way, to live in this way. And so we do recognize that if we're going to think differently, if we're going to live for God's will, it's going to take reflection and, and understanding of all that God has done and being motivated and moved uh, by the mercies of God that are new every morning, that he has done through the gospel. It's just, it's, uh, it's, it's based on uh, what he has done for us. And so, uh, yeah, really what I'm, we're, we're trying to crack into here is a different and a, and a new way of thinking, of viewing uh, life as a Christian. 
All right, thank you, Ben. I wanted to pick up on verse 2, and uh, this follows along what Ben was saying about giving yourself as a sacrifice. In verse 2 it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And there's really two things that verse 2 uh, talks about that I want to talk about a little bit. First of all, and I'm going to use this little whiteboard. That's why we're here today rather than sitting at our table or somewhere else. But uh, in verse 2, it says, Don't be conformed to this world. And then it says, Be transformed by renewing the mind. And and in these two things, we, they're really like two sides of the same coin here. So as we're giving ourselves as a sacrifice, well, first of all, don't don't make yourself like the world. Don't, don't be like the rest of the world. And, and this is this is something that just like Ben was saying, we're, we're just come, we're coming out of the world before we we're saved. You know, we come into Christ, and we're now now we're saved. So we're coming out of the world, uh, and not being like the world means that there is a change that has to take place in the way that we live and in the way that we think. And so, don't be like the world that you just came out of. Be different from the world, and being different from the world. Uh, involves a transformation. I mean, we're changing here now. We're Christians. We're transforming ourselves. And how are we doing it? By changing the way that we think. And so, uh, a lot of times I think we put an emphasis on our service and what we're supposed to do. And that's really important. I mean, that's what uh, verse 1 is talking about. Uh, and even, you know, this, this part here in verse 2, that we're supposed to live differently. But not only are we supposed to live differently, we're supposed to think differently about things. And so this becomes really, really crucial for how we live as Christians. Be transformed. The transformation takes place in renewing our mind. And so we're to change the way that we think, which of course in turn will change the way in, we, in which we live. And so this uh, change, this transformation takes place as we move from being unsaved to being saved, and then as we uh, adjust ourselves or, sanctif or, get, or sanctify ourselves or be san or are sanctified through the course of our life by the work of the Spirit, there's a, this ongoing change that takes place. And the last part of verse 2 is really interesting. As we do this, if we're not like the world, and as we transform ourselves, we are going to prove the will of God. Hmm. Now, now, this is really interesting. I mean, after all, the... We know as Christians that we're supposed to live according to the will of God. I mean, we pray according to the will of God, and we want God's will to be done in this earth as part of the Lord's Prayer. And uh, you know, doing God's will is just an important part of living the Christian life. We want to live according to the will of God. We want to stay away from the things that He is not pleased with. We want to do the things that He is pleased with. We want to think on the things that are pleasing to him rather than thinking on worldly things that are not pleasing to him. And so all of this is to prove or to test out or to bring to bear the good will of God. It is good, it is perfect, it is acceptable as it says here. And that is to be uh, what we demonstrate by our lives in this world, the will of God and how good it is. And so I hope as we move through this chapter because it becomes very, very practical. He encourages us to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. He tells us not to be like the world. He tells us to transform by the renewing of the mind. And then the whole rest of the chapter is just one practical exhortation after another in which uh, he is trying to get us to flesh these first two verses out. And so we're going to see as we move through this chapter, I think it's really important. We're going to talk about spiritual gifts, and we're going to talk about prayer, and we're going to talk about loving uh, uh, those that are around us. We're going to talk about all kinds of things. And it becomes ex an extremely important uh, expression or manifestation, manifestation of our Christianity in this world. So we are to live a certain way. We are to think a certain way. And we're going to be emphasizing that second one especially. Think how to think right about things, how to think according to 
the way God wants us to think. That's an important part of the transformation process. Well, thank you for uh, joining us today. I hope that you will make plans to join us next Friday as we continue this study in Romans chapter 12. God bless you.